What is going on everyone, it is Andrew here from MAO Magic, and I'm here with Airmail for iPhone. Now, Airmail has been a popular mail client for OS X for quite a while now, and they are finally bringing that to the iPhone. So when you first open it for this time, you're going to get a lot of those basic pop-ups. Can we use notifications? Can we use the background information? Uh, obviously, all that's going to work better if you say yes. This will support pretty much any account type that you can throw at it. Uh, one of my favorite features here is it has 1Password integration. So you don't actually have to put in any of those passwords. You can simply tap that 1Password icon in that top right-hand corner and enter all of your information in automatically. So you just added one account. It'll ask you if you want to enable notifications on that one account. You can turn on notifications on an account by account basis. So you can have multiple accounts in here, obviously, as many clients can. Now on the left-hand side, when you swipe out that menu, there's a ton of different things like starred, to-do, and snooze. You can configure all the snooze configurations if you want to do different times. Uh, there is documents, which is one of my favorite features that they've started to implement in a few different mail clients. And then just all of your attachments in one spot. Now this does support iCloud Sync, so if you are using it on your Mac or another iPhone, these are the ridiculous number of kind of customizations that you can sync across. Like it is a huge list. Like you can set all these things up, you can set up on your Mac or on your iPhone, and it'll sync all those across. You don't have to configure it because of the sheer number of customizations you can do. Services is also a very unique thing that I really like a lot, and you can tie this into many different services like Evernote, Deliveries, Wonderlist, Box, Dropbox, Google Drive, there, there's a ton, and they're going to be adding more in the future, but basically just allows you to work with those and tie them to the different actions that you can do inside of the application. If one of these services you do not have already on your phone, there's an easy little install button so you can add it. There are notifications you can configure, including which actions that you want to do based on your different swipes. You can choose those actions that you want to include in the actions menu. So this can be like the full menu of all the actions. You can tell it which ones you would like to use as well as change the order. As far as snoozes go, which is a really helpful feature, you can change the duration and times of those different snoozes. So you, if one of them come up, you know, if you say tomorrow, you wouldn't, when do you want it tomorrow? 9 a.m. later. Um, there's different appearances. You can choose whether you have icons on your accounts where you highlight the subjects, highlight the unread ones, uh, show account icons or the different account colors. And we'll look at that in a moment. You can change your signatures, you can change your default, you can show what kind of it previews, how many lines of text it'll preview for the messages. There is a ton of customizations here. We're just going through a couple of different ones. I really like how you can choose the default browser, whether it's in app or in another application, when it downloads apps or downloads the attachments, what size to download them in. There are a ton of different language options. This is not just for English users. You can choose your default sender if you have multiple accounts on there when you pop it up, which one you want to default send with. And there's just there's a lot. We cannot cover everything in this little video. Um, here we've actually added two accounts and you can see the different colors on the left hand side, the blue and red based on which account it is. When you swipe left or right, you can do a couple different things like snooze or move it to the trash. A longer swipe can do a different uh, thing and on the right hand side, if you swipe again, it'll pull up that action list, which again is really neat. Uh, so like a delivery, you can just hit track and deliveries. It'll import all that information into the deliveries app or you can send that file to Dropbox, Evernote, you can customize all of this and change the order. It's really cool. Now, uh, as far as actually composing a message, I thought they did a really nice job with this as well. So you can tap that compose button in the top right hand corner. And while they do not have quick replies, which I, I would prefer, but there are a bunch of cool little options here. And I just love the little animations they do. That one on the far left, that's going to allow you to change the different fonts and styling of your text. Any of these little buttons, you just tap them. They have a nice little pop to them and just like really nice little details that they put into this application. You can swipe that menu across and see a bunch of different other styling options as well. On the right hand side, you can add attachments, whether it's from, you know, iCloud Drive or more. You can choose from photos where you want to take a photo or attachment from your camera roll and choose which signature that you would like to attach to this email. So we've looked at a lot of the features of AirMail here. We've glossed over quite a bit of them, but we'll go ahead and break it down between the pros and the cons. First up is the iCloud Sync. This does have a Mac client, so it will sync all those preferences because there are a ton of different things you can kind of configure. There are just a ridiculous number of features, so we can't kind of cover them all, but uh, lots and lots of features, which is a very impressive for a first release. Has that Mac client that we mentioned already. The action list is kind of unique, and it has a ton of different options that you can do with your messages. Has background fetch, which was just released in the newest update. And we didn't really get to look at it too much, but it has 3D touch, allowing you to create a new message or get to your documents and a couple others for searches. Now, unfortunately, on the con side, there is no iPad client. This is something I was really missing, especially for the iPad Pro. On the sync side, apparently several people had reported problems with syncing. I have had not an issue, but the caliber of the rest of the application leads me to believe that this will be fixed very quickly. I've had no problems on the Mac client or even on my mail client on my iPhone. 
Uh, there is no quick reply, so you can't just do quick reply like on the inbox application. And there are no smart inboxes. It cannot smartly uh, kind of organize things based on just their content like the Google inbox client does. If you're interested, you can pick it up for $5 in the App Store. The link is in the description below. Other than that, please subscribe. Give this a thumbs up. Check out our website, maomagic.com, and I'll see you next time.